Hello everyone, Oli here. Welcome back to another video. It's been a hot minute or two. Welcome back to part two, if you will, of the beginner's guide series to outdoors and adventure filmmaking. Today we're going to focus a little bit on the post-processing side of things and I thought that we could dive into the fundamentals and basics of recovering your shot and colour correcting so that you can bring out those natural vibrant colours of the outdoors. These fundamentals and basics can be applied to most outdoors footage and most kinds of footage out there actually and it doesn't really matter what camera you filmed on whether it's a GoPro, smartphone or a really expensive camera um, the fundamentals still apply but caveat, the results will of course be dependent on how well you've set up your, your camera settings in order to capture the scene correctly and that means ensuring that you're not underexposing your shots as a rule of thumb, in photos you want to be shooting where you're protecting those highlights whereas in video you want to be leaning towards protecting the darks and the shadows a bit more because those are harder to recover in post. You also want to make sure that your white balance is set accurately so making sure that you're not shooting in auto white balance especially in outdoors when the conditions can change really rapidly so what this will do is actually shift your image between cold and warm hues and anything in between and you'll end up looking like you're having a rave outdoors which you don't want to do because that'll be really hard to recover and fix in post so make sure that you're not shooting in auto white balance for general outdoor lighting and conditions you want to be somewhere between 54 to 5600 now as this is just a beginner's guide i'm going to assume most of you are shooting with a standard picture profile or straight out of your camera and you're not really focused on shooting in log so I won't dive too deep into that but if you are interested in shooting in log then the general idea of it is that log mode is basically like the equivalent of a raw photo. When you're shooting in log you're just retaining more data and dynamic range so that when you bring that file into your editing software you can have more flexibility in manipulating your footage before the, the video starts falling apart. Now if you're shooting on a modern camera then thankfully the standard picture profile or the shot straight out of camera still has enough data so that you can do the basic recovery and fixing in post. And if you're not interested in color grading or LUTs or making your footage look super stylized then you can still use the standard uh, profile straight out of camera to get really good results. When we're shooting outdoors we don't really have any control in how the light works we just have to do our best with what mother nature gives us and aside from slapping an nd filter in front of the lens to reduce the brightness what we can do is just ensure that the settings are as accurate as possible when we're capturing our scene now if you're anything like me i get way too excited outdoors and sometimes i make a lot of mistakes i don't pay attention to my settings, I'm moving fast so I just want to click and go sometimes and then I come back and look at my footage and my highlights are blown out and my shadows are kind of crushed and everything is just kind of rubbish right but we're gonna take a look at some clips now we're gonna jump into an editing software and I'll show you some clips that just weren't so great and we're gonna look at how to recover and do basic fixes here and there in order to make a kind of crap footage look better. Alright so we're in Premiere Pro right now and I normally do use DaVinci Resolve but I know that the majority of people use Premiere Pro and I'm more familiar with that um, so I will probably switch between both just to show you a little bit of the UI between the two but the idea of adjusting the image or the video is exactly the same. So as you can see here we've got a pretty generic shot the highlights have completely blown out and it's all looking pretty flat in general. Now when you're doing basic touch-ups or any kind of like color grading um, you want to make sure that you have the Lumetri scopes showing at least and what this will do is basically show you in data form what's happening within the, the footage. So your zero down here represents your absolute blacks, so your shadows, and then the hundred represents your absolute whites, so your, your highlights. Now for the most part you want or the data form, the waveforms to be sitting between the two and as you can see here for the most part it's okay but we can see that the top portion of the image of the video is actually clipping and you can see that in the whites that have completely blown out here in the clouds and the sky in general is just too bright. Now if we come over to the basic correction panel this is where you're going to be doing the majority of the fixes so you're not going to be worrying about the creative uh, side of things for now 
we might touch into that a little bit. You can see here that I've got two adjustment layers. Now it's really dependent on how you want to go ahead and edit. If you want to directly edit onto your clip, you can. But what I find uh, simpler and more forgiving is that if I add adjustment layers, they work like layers in Photoshop. So you can do an adjustment on one layer and then add another one if you don't want to ruin the stuff that you've done on the first layer. Now if I turn these two layers back on, you can see what I've done here. So turning the second layer off for now, in the first layer, what I've basically done is introduce contrast and brought back those highlights so they're not completely blown out. And I've added a tiny bit of color to the mid ground here and darkened the foreground a little bit because I want the eyes to travel through the front to the back of the, uh, the video clip. Because this is where the, the focus is, right? It's the peaks, it's these stunning landscapes in the background. We don't want the eye stuck in the foreground when it's too bright, um, like it would be here. Okay, so we've gotten rid of all the adjustments that I made earlier, and I'm just going to show you quickly how to basically get to that point. As you can see here, we've got an adjustment layer on top. I haven't added anything to it yet. You can see that in the histogram, everything is as it should be. So we're going to just come into here select your adjustment layer and we're just going to play around with these sliders. Now if you're just starting out don't feel intimidated because you can basically undo anything that you apply here. So you can just shift around these sliders to see what's happening to the image and also what's happening with the, the Lumetri scopes over here. It's a good way to get used to the different tools. You can see that if I lower the brightness, the exposure by maybe like half a stop or just under. We can basically recover the highlights in those clouds. You can also do with lowering the highlights here a little bit more as well. Now a lot of this is going to be to your own taste, but as a rule of thumb, it's a good idea to keep an eye on your scopes just to make sure that the data is sitting somewhere between zero and 100. Now the idea here is that I'm trying to get a good balance between the shadows and the lights. And this is going to be like the base that you work off from. I don't want the shadows to be too harsh. Because I learned somewhere that absolute blacks are not good for the cinematic look. So as you can see, we've just done a basic adjustment and recovered the highlights and everything. And already that's already looking better than what we had before. Now what I like to do is just hold alt and drag up and this will duplicate the layer that you were selecting and then I'll just remove the attributes um, from this top layer and that's just kind of like removing all the adjustments that I made here. So now I'm going to use this adjustment layer to apply some colors and some contrast and play around with that. And the reason that I do it this way is because I don't want to mess around and mess up the settings that I've made on the layer below. So if I didn't like the stuff up here, I can just delete this layer. Now I'm just bringing up the contrast to see how that will look. I can see that if I push it too much, the highlights will start to, to clip. So I don't want to go too crazy there just yet. We'll introduce some warmth to, to the image. And what happens if you push up the, the saturation? So if you go to extremes, then you can see that it just kind of looks like a puke of colors. So now I went back to the first layer and this is, I guess we can say that the first layer is kind of like your lighting adjustments. Um, so I'm just playing around with the curves just to bring out the, the shadows and the highlights a bit more. And this is looking a bit better. We can see that the focus is now shifting to the mid-ground here as opposed to just being stuck in the foreground in this kind of like ugly patch of grass. So if I turn these two off, you can see that the difference um, that it's made. I just want to go back to the color correcting um, and play around with the, the vibrance, the saturation and the shadow tint a little bit. I'm just going to drag this down a very tiny touch. Now if you're feeling a bit spicy 
and it's a good way to practice because you want to be doing this a lot it will help you bring out the dynamic colors in your in your footage you can come down here to the color wheels and match and in, it's the same concept as the wheels above in the shadows and tints you could you just want to play around with the shadows generally i like to bring it down to the blues because in the areas that the light hasn't hit yet we still have those cool tones and you can see that within the original image as well. You can see the kind of like cooler tones here in the shadows. And I just want to emphasize that a little bit. And this is going to bring in a little bit more interest into your footage. And I want the midtones to be slightly warmer. So we're being very, very subtle with these wheels here. And then the highlights, I do want it a smidge warmer as well because I do recall that when the sun was just rising, the highlights in the clouds and up in the mountains here um, they were a bit warmer and then the slider here to the left basically just adjusts the brightness of the the wheel that you're you're tweaking so for me this is pretty good to go already like I'm not trying to represent a false image of what was actually occurring when I was on this hike so I remember that it was it was still early morning the sun was just rising we had some colors on the peaks and a lot of it was still pretty dark and pretty flat and this is okay for me this is representative of what I saw I'd probably tweak a little bit more of the contrast up here but other than that I'm happy to use this you know I'm not trying to win some color grading award or anything like that so this is pretty okay for me so here is a quick before and after just by tweaking some basic sliders within Premiere we've actually managed to recover the highlights and bring in contrast and a bit more color into our scene and we reshifted the focus from that foreground to the midground I maybe would have played with this a little bit more just to reduce the contrast and the darkness within the midground, but for the most part, this is good to go. So we're jumping into DaVinci Resolve real quick, and I want to show you some examples using the same fundamentals and basic edits that we did in Premiere Pro. Just going to show you various clips from different cameras. So here we've got the clip from a Mavic drone and another clip from a Mavic drone, one that isn't particularly uh, nice or anything like that and then uh, a footage from a GoPro Hero 7 Black so a very old camera now and then we've got that very first clip that we made the edits to in Premiere Pro and by using the same exact fundamental rules and edits we can achieve the same results here and the great thing about DaVinci Resolve is that you don't need an adjustment layer clip to turn off any kind of edits that you made because we work within a node system and what these essentially are is pretty much like layers right all the adjustment clips themselves so if i turn this off one by one you can see that we've applied pretty much the exact same thing that we did in premiere pro within those different adjustment layer clips but we're just doing it in within the node system without it affecting the, the actual footage itself so I'll give you a quick overview of what's happening in this page. It may look completely different than the tool you're using, but the concept is more or less the same. Like the tools do the exact same thing. They're just laid out slightly different within the UI, right? Because of the different software. So here we've got the Lumetri scopes um, and you can change between the different kind of scopes that you want to see by hitting this little drop down here, which is very useful. And here we've got the different kind of color editing and targeting tool. So you can adjust like the luminance, the hues and the saturation within here and also play around with the curves. And here you've got the color warper and it's kind of the same concept as the curves adjustments here, but it's kind of laid out in this sort of spider web uh, diagram. Here you've got the eyedropper. I like using this because you can target selected colors and it will only manipulate those the color within the range that you selected your mask tool your camera tool so you can stabilize and do funky stuff with the cameras in here and then your sharpening and blur and your masks so these are all the basic tools that you'll be playing around with and then over here we've got the color wheels where you can adjust the highlights the shadows the gains and saturation and then the temperature so like your basic correction tool that we saw in premiere pro lives here and if you come over to this little tab 
you can also adjust the, the midtones, the highlights. These are just the color wheels that we're playing around with in order to bring in the coolness and the warmness into the, the shadows and the highlights. And then of course over here we've got a selection of effects that you can play around with. And there's just so much more to uh, DaVinci Resolve, but I'm just giving you a quick rundown of the tools that you'd be using. Now if we go to the next clip, you can see that it's exactly the same. If I turn these all off, you can see that I've got the basic adjustments to the highlights and the colors and the brightness. And then I've added a bit more contrast into this one, added a bit more warmth and a bit more color. And then for this, I used the range selector tool to select the water and increase its brightness and contrast a little bit to bring in the pop back to the whites, as you can see here. And then this one is the exact same thing. So I increased the brightness overall, and then I introduced a little bit of contrast here and there, introduced a bit more color and kind of slightly sharpened the the details a little bit, not too much, and then added a little bit more pop to the clouds. And then for this one, it's the exact same thing. So if I turn these all off, you can see that it's pretty flat. Your eyes kind of just like don't really know where to fall. So I introduced a little bit of contrast and fixed some, some highlights here and there. And then I brought up the brightness a little bit. So now the eyes kind of flow from here down the path to the peak to the back. And then here, it's the exact same thing, it looks slightly different, but I'm just playing around with the range selector tool. And the top one, I used it to select the, the kind of like the highlights within the path to play around with its brightness and its saturation. And then for this, I played around with the shadows of the cloud. And then, yeah, that's pretty much the result of that. So you can see that by applying the same basic edits, you can pretty much recover and elevate any footage. It doesn't matter what camera it's from and you can achieve just a better looking video clip overall. Now I think a lot of people shy away from doing these edits. I know that I did when I first started out, but by learning these fundamentals, I actually, I just really enjoy capturing things a bit more because I know that if I mess up, I can at least recover it in a way where it looks decent enough to use. And if you are intimidated and you're put off by doing these edits, just remember that whatever you're doing here, it's all experimental and you can undo anything that you do to your clips. So it's not permanent. With that knowledge in mind, just go ahead and just blast some colors and some contrast in there to see what kind of look and feel that you can create and achieve. I also know that a lot of people rely heavily on LUTs and stylized color grading. You know, they think they buy into this whole like, oh yeah, if I buy these LUTs and apply it to my footage, it'll just look automatically amazing. That's not how LUTs work. And I wouldn't apply any LUTs or any kind of color grading on top of these footage without first doing these basic fundamentals and recovery. Um, I've tried it, you know, and it just looks rubbish because with the LUTs that you've downloaded or bought, they were made for other people's clips and I just, I wouldn't rely on them. Sure, it might look nice to apply after you've made these kind of base, base edits, but I would say that this step here is 90% of the work. You know, it's 90% of the work. It'll get you almost all the way there to get your footage looking really nice. And then the LUTs, the stylized color grading is just the extra 10% of spice. It's just spice, you know, it's extra dressing on top of what you've already done. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it's been useful to some of you and I hope that I explained it in a way where it's simple enough because I'm, I was trying to avoid using all the, the technical jargon and get getting too deep into you know, all the tools and what they do and how professional it all is. I'm just trying to keep it as basic as possible because I know that when I first started to look at this stuff, it was just sort of like, what the hell is all this, you know? So the takeaway here is bring back the highlights, create some contrast focus the eyes to the light and if you follow that it should be more or less good to go for most clips all right guys that's it nice to see you all here again and i hope to see you within the next video